In this lesson, we're going to be understanding the concept of a square root of a number. The success criteria is, I can find square roots of numbers, I can evaluate expressions involving square roots, and I can use square roots to solve equations. A square root of a number p is a number whose square is equal to p. So, a square root of a number p is a solution of the equation x squared equals p. Every positive number has a positive and negative square root. A perfect square is a number with integers as its square roots. For this example, we're going to find two square roots of 49. Remember, every positive number has both a positive square root and a negative square root. And we just want to think, what number multiplied by itself, or what number squared, is going to equal 49? Well, I know that 7 times 7 is 49, so I know that one of my square roots is going to be positive 7. But remember, there's always a negative square root. And if my positive square root is positive 7, my negative square root is going to be negative 7 because negative 7 times negative 7, well, a negative times a negative is a positive, and we have a positive number here, and then 7 times 7 is 49. So this is going to be 49. So I know that 7 squared is equal to 49. And I know that negative 7, that quantity squared, is also equal to 49. Therefore, my two square roots are going to be 7 and negative 7. Another way to write this is plus or minus 7. Okay? Either way is fine. Anyway, now we're done with this one. This symbol right here is called a radical sign. It is used to represent a square root. The number under the radical sign is called the radicand. So this right here is read the square root of p, and this represents the positive square root of p. Okay? And if I have the negative sign next to it, it's the negative square root of p. And if I have plus or minus the square root of p, this represents both square roots of p. For this example, we're going to find the square roots. So for part a, this is read the square root of 25, or radical 25. Okay? Anyway, I need to find a number that multiplied by itself is going to equal 25, or what number squared equals 25. Well, I know that's going to be 5, because 5 squared, or 5 times 5, is 25. So this is going to be 5. Now, I'm seeing here that there's no negative sign here, no plus or minus. So if it's just this radical sign here, then I only want the positive square root. So my answer to this one is just going to be positive 5. So now we're done with part A. For part B, I see I have the negative square root of 49. Well, we just kind of did something like this in the last one, uh, but I wanted both square roots of 49. Now I just want the negative square root of 49. So I know that 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times itself is 49. So I'm just going to take that 7 and then make it negative. So I have negative 7. This is asking for the negative square root, and negative 7 is the negative square root of 49. Now for part C, it wants plus or minus the square root of 16. Okay, So it wants both of the square roots. Well, I need to figure out what number squared is equal to 16. So what number times itself equals 16? And I know that's going to be 4. 4 times 4 is 16. But I want both the positive and negative square root. So I can just rewrite that as plus or minus 4. This represents two numbers, both positive 4 and it represents negative 4. Okay, So both of these are the square roots that we're looking for for part C. Anyway, now we're done with this one. For this example, we're going to find the square roots. For part A, I have the square root of a fraction. Well, if you remember how fractions are multiplied, we just multiply the top and multiply the bottom. So that means when I'm taking the square root of a fraction, I can just take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So for this fraction right here, I want to take the positive square root of 9 over 16. Well, I can just kind of treat these individual and then put them all together. Well, the square root of 9, what number multiplied by itself equals 9? Well, that's going to be 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. So this is going to be 3 and then over, I just bring the fraction bar down, and then what number multiplied by itself is going to equal 16? Well, that is going to be 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. Now, to check your answer, if you want, you can just do, okay, 3 fourths squared, or times itself. Well, 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 4 is 16, so I know that 3 fourths, that quantity squared, is equal to 9 over 16. So I know that my answer is correct for part A. So for part B, I want to do plus or minus the square root of 2.25. Well, this might look a little bit tricky because there's a decimal, but it's actually not as hard as you might think it is. So since there's two digits behind the decimal, that means that I could have one number with one digit behind the decimal times another number with one digit behind the decimal, aka a number with one decimal place times itself. 
Okay. I can also think of this as ignoring the decimal at first. I can kind of think of this as 225. Okay. So if I rewrite this as 225, I can figure out what number multiplied by itself is equal to 225. Well, if you don't know this off the top of your head, one thing I like to do is just square factors of 10. So if I do 10 squared, I know that that's 100 because 10 times 10 is 100. Well, now I'm going to do 20 squared. Well, 20 squared is 400 because 20 times 20 is 400. So because 10 squared is 100 and 20 squared is 400, I know that this number right here, the square root of this number, is going to be in between 10 and 20. So now I want to say, okay, well, I see that this is an odd number. I know an odd times an odd has to be an odd, and an even times an even has to be an even. So I know that my square root's going to be odd. So the numbers that are in between 10 and 20 that are odd are going to be 11, 13, 15, and 17, and 19. All right, so these are my possibilities here that could be my square root of 225. Anyway, the last thing that I see is this ends in a 5, and the number that multiplies by itself that ends in a 5 is going to be 5. So if I do 15, because that's the only one that ends in a 5 here, I'm going to multiply this out and see if this works. So 15 times 15, well, this is going to be 25, and then this gets me a 7, bring down the 0, and then I get a 15 here. If I add these up, I get a 5, a 12, and a 225. So I know that 15 squared does equal 225. And once again, the way that I did that is I did my factors of 10 because they're easy to square. 10 squared equals 100. 20 squared equals 400. And I know that this number is in between that so that my square root has to be in between these. Anyway, I wrote my numbers out. I kind of used logic to figure out that 15 is probably going to be the one that works. I multiplied it out to test it out. And now I know the square root of 225 is going to be 15. But look back here, there's a decimal. So if I did this whole thing again, but I used a decimal, if I did 1.5 here and 1.5, the only difference here would be that I just have to move my decimal two spaces. So now I know that the square root of this right here is going to be 1.5. And I need my plus or minus here because I want both the positive square root and the negative square root. So anyway, after all that long process, we are done with part B. Squaring a number and finding a square root undo each other. So they are inverse operations. For example, the square root of 4 squared equals 16, which is equal to 4. And the square root of 4, quantity squared, is the same thing as 2 squared, which is 4. Okay, so these basically undo each other. You can use this relationship to evaluate expressions. Now, this right here is saying that we are going to be doing our square roots in the same step in our order of operations as exponents because squaring something is an exponent. So what we used to think as PEMDAS before, now we can think as PERMDAS for our order of operations, where first we do parentheses or anything in groups, then we do exponents and radicals, or exponents and roots, in the same step. Then we do multiplication and division in the same step. Then we do addition and subtraction in the same step. And next, we're going to do an example using this. So for this example, we're going to evaluate each expression. So I have 5 times the square root of 36 plus 7 for part A. So I'm going to zoom in here. And remember, the first thing I want to do is check for parentheses. And I don't see anything here. Now, just a quick note. Um, anything under the radical, this whole radicand, if there's an operation under this, you treat that as parentheses, right? So you could treat this like having parentheses here, but we don't need it in this case, so I'm going to erase this. Um, next, we do exponents and roots. I don't see any exponents, but I do see the square root of 36. Well, what number multiplied by itself equals 36? That's going to be 6. So, so this whole thing is going to turn into 5 times 6. And then I'll bring down the plus 7. All right, well, 5 times 6, I'm going to do that before I add the 7. So 5 times 6 is 30 plus 7. That gives me 37 for my answer for part A. Now I'm going to do part B. So like I said for part B, if there's an operation under the square root, uh, we do that first, and then we evaluate the square root. Well, first I know that I can simplify 18 over 2. Well, that's just going to be 9. So this whole thing's going to be 1 fourth plus the square root of 9 now, I'm going to do my roots because there's nothing else to simplify. So the square root of 9 is 3. This is the positive square root. So I'm going to do 3, and I'll bring down the plus. 
and one fourth. Well, one fourth plus three is just three and one fourth. You could also rewrite this as, if I turn this into a mixed number, I do four times three plus one, which is 13 over four. Both of these are correct. You could write that as a decimal too, uh, 3.25. Anyway, let's move on to part C. Well, in this one, you could take the square root of 81, because we're going to do stuff inside the parentheses, then we'll do our exponents, which is going to be 9, and then I do 9 squared, which gets me back to 81, because 9 times 9 is 81. Or you could recognize that the square root here and this quantity squared are going to cancel each other out. This squaring and this square root are inverse operations, therefore they cancel. So I can just rewrite this whole thing as 81 minus 5, and 81 minus 5 is going to be 76. Anyway, now we're done with this example. Because squaring a number and taking the square root are inverse operations, you can solve an equation of the form x squared equals p by taking the square root of each side. So we're going to solve the each equation here. I'm going to zoom in. So for part A, I have x squared equals 81. I'm going to rewrite this to give me some more space. So x squared equals 81. All right. Anyway. To solve this equation, what I need to do is I actually need to take plus or minus the square root of each side. Okay? Technically, you only need to do it uh, to one side, but I always recommend to my students that you take it to both sides because um, it's a great way to remember that we want both the positive solution and the negative solution. Anyway, to cancel this out, I'm going to do plus or minus the square root of both sides. Okay? Now, this operation right here, and this operation right here are going to cancel. So now I just get x. And I know that the square root of 81 is 9, because 9 times 9 is 81. And then I just bring down my plus or minus. So I know that the solutions that make this equation true are going to be positive 9 and negative 9. Anyway, now we're done with part A. For part B, I have 3a squared equals 48. Well, my a squared is not all by itself, so I need to remove this coefficient. So what I'm going to do to remove this coefficient is divide by 3 on both sides. Well, I know that 48 divided by 3 is 16, so I get a squared equals 16. Now, since I have my a squared all alone, now I can take plus or minus the square root of both sides. Once again, you technically only need to take plus or minus the square root of one of these sides, but I just feel like it's always easier to remember that you need to take plus or minus if you do it to both sides. Anyway, this side will cancel, so I just get a. And now I have plus or minus the square root of 16. Well, 4 squared is 16. 4 times 4 is 16. So I'm going to get plus or minus 4. Anyway, now we're done with this one. The area of a crop circle is 45,216 square feet. What is the radius of the crop circle? Now, it doesn't say here, but we are going to round uh, our answer, but we'll get there when we get there. So first we want to remember our equation for the area of a circle. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. So I'm going to write that down. A equals pi r squared. All right. Well, now what I want to do is I want to plug in my area value. I know the area of this crop circle is 45,216 feet. So instead of A, I'm going to plug this value in here. So I'm going to rewrite this as 45,216 equals pi r squared. And remember, I'm solving for the radius. I'm solving for r. And also remember that pi is just a number, approximately 3.14. Okay. So what I'm going to do on both sides is actually divide by pi. Okay. And since I want a rounded answer, what I'm actually going to do is leave this in terms of pi. And then when we finish solving, then we'll plug this into a calculator. If you didn't have a calculator, you could also use 3.14 to get your estimation. Anyway, these are going to cancel. So now I get 45,216 over pi equals r squared. Okay. Now to solve for r here, I just have to take plus or minus the square root of both sides. Okay. But I actually really only need to take the positive square root of both sides because in this context, we're dealing with a radius. And the radius is a distance from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. So that means that I cannot have a negative radius. So I can completely ignore the negative square root here. So I'm going to take just the positive square root of both sides. Anyway, I'm going to get r equals. And then this is what I can plug into my calculator. So I'm going to go to my Desmos scientific calculator right now. So what I'm going to type in is the square root. So this is the square root button. And then 
45,216, and then over pi. And the calculator is evaluating this, and I get just about 119.96, blah, blah, blah. This rounded to the nearest whole number is going to be 120. So I'm going to go back here. My radius is, and I'm going to actually change this to approximately. So my squiggly equals. So this is about 120. And then I want to go back on my units. Here I'm dealing with square feet for my area. If my area is in square feet, that means my radius is just going to be in feet. So I know that my radius is going to equal about 120 feet. And now we're done with this one.